In this session of Look at the Book, we focus on Hebrews 2, 14, and 15, and we ask the simple question, why Christmas? Father, I pray that you would reveal to us so that we can see with the eyes of our heart the magnificence and the depth and the preciousness of the reasons for Christmas given in this text. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. There are four reasons for Christmas in this text. First, number one, since therefore the children, that's us, children of God, and in this case, according to the context, children of Christ, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that is flesh and blood. So reason number one is Because since we, children, are human, he partook of our nature. And we'll see why he wanted to come among us. But reason number one is we're human, therefore he became human. Reason number two, in order that, here it is, in order that through death, so stop right there. So reason number two is, He couldn't die, so he could die, is why he came. In order that through death, you can't die if you're not human. In order that through death, he might, here's number three, he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil. So reason number three is to destroy the devil. Evidently, we'll see why in a minute, he needed to die in order to destroy the one who uh, has the power of death, namely the devil. And the fourth reason that he gives for why Christmas is, and He did this in order that he might deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. So reason number four is to deliver us from the slavery which results from fear, which results from impending death. So let's let's sum them let's sum them up. Reason number one Christmas happened. Because we are human. Two, Christmas happened so that by becoming human, he might die. So he could die. And just stop and ponder that for just a minute. That means that the purpose of God for his son to die preceded his purpose for the incarnation to happen because the reason for the incarnation is the death of the Son of God. It's not as though uh, the Son of God had planned to come among us for some other reason and something went wrong and, well, I guess you'll have to go to die now. No, no. The purpose was to die and in order to die, you must share in flesh and blood. Third, he died so that through death he might destroy the devil. And fourth, he destroyed the devil who has the power of death so that he could free us from slavery to the fear of lifelong fear of death, of death. The assumption of this writer is that everybody has a deep, even if unconscious, fear of dying, and that that deep subconscious fear holds us in lifelong slavery. But we are set free from that by 
the power of Christ in his death, destroying the works of the devil. And that's possible because he, he died. And that's possible because he partook of flesh and blood. And that's why Christmas. Now, one more question. These two right here seem strange, don't they? By dying, he destroyed the one who has the power of death, the devil. That doesn't mean, this word destroy here doesn't mean he put the devil out of existence. It means he nullified him. He, he broke the back of his power. He took away his capacity to cause the slavery to fear. How did he do that? And I think the answer is given in this magnificent text here in Colossians 2. God made us alive with Christ, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us. Canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands. This he set aside. How? By nailing it to the cross. So when, when Christ died for us, The record of debt that stood against us with all our sins in that record, he nailed to the cross. And now here's the key. Having, and I'm going to put the word thus here because I think that's implied, having thus disarmed the rulers and authorities, that's the devil and all his hordes, having disarmed them, how did he disarm them? And put them to a public shame by triumphing over them in him. How did he do that? He did it by nailing something to the cross. What did he nail to the cross? He nailed to the cross the record of my debts that stood against me with all their legal demands. Which means that he he took away the one weapon that could damn me. Satan is the great accuser, right? So he stands before God with a big folder, and the folder has in it my sins, all of them, and he accuses me before God day and night. But when I trust Christ and am united to him, his death counts for me, and the record of that debt with all those things against me is taken out of the devil's hands. So you come back over here and it says, Through death, he destroyed, nullified, canceled, made powerless the one who has the power of death. How does he have the power of death? He has the power of death by turning death into a doorway to hell instead of a doorway to heaven by damning me with all the record of my debts. And he, by his death, took that out. He destroyed him by taking out of his hand the weapon. So now he's, he's helpless to damn me or destroy me. And thus, he delivers me from the fear of death and that awful slavery that had kept me all my life worrying. And if we are freed from this horrible slavery of death, we are the freest of all peoples. And that is owing to the fact that the devil is destroyed by having his accusations removed. And that happens because Christ died. And that happens because Christ partook of the nature. And that happened because of Christmas. So it is no wonder that we should look into each other's eyes and from the bottom of our hearts say, Merry Christmas.